Gude. This monitor is almost perfect. It has HDMI, DVI, VGA, sound and power. But today monitors have to be smart. And how do you get your monitor smart? You can plug your laptop in there or your PlayStation or whatever. Or you use something like this, which is a Chromecast. And you plug it in there and you can use your cell phone to stream and cast data on it but it requires power and since the monitor is old for monitor ages it doesn't have a usb power port but looking at it we see it it gets 19 volts with 1.2 amps so i think we can we can just take us a watt from the from it and power our usb port from it since it's 19 volts and not 5 volts we have to use a step down converter and we have we then plug this into the USB port, use tons of hot glue to secure it somewhere where we could use it, and use a little wire to get the power from A to B to wherever we can stick this thing. But before we start, we need to get into it. So as you see, I already removed two screws to get into the stuff. Just remove all the, the screws in there and then try to pry it open so we have like two options for prying it open one is here and one is here and since this didn't work i tried this here and we, and we just need an enter point and then we just push and we see that nothing ah there's something there's something that's good You have to be careful if they use little plastic hooks, you can break them. What we see, yeah, perfect. Now, in this case, they don't use like, yeah, they use like really good flat hooks. I attached this monitor to the wall, so therefore, I was using these things and. <laughs> Now I'm quite surprised that the only thing that actually holds the whole um, screen to the wall is like these clamp rails here, plus the two screws down here. And this is a normal stand. I think I can remove it by maybe taking out these two screws, four screws. But you know, it's not that bad because if you use like an HDMI cable and the power, then the HDMI cable sticks out as well. Okay, we don't need this, and then we have a look into it. And here, the old logic board, obviously. These are most likely the cables that go to the buttons, because like every screen we have the buttons with the light down there. And then we have the ribbon cable for the input. For ah, and this also might be the power for the LEDs, LED in the backlight. And we have some grounding, but yeah, <laughs> it's oh, it's very very weak. Yeah, I think the hot glue has to help here as well. So, but as we see, this is the connector for the power down here, and there's no obvious way to connect to it since it's just soldered on the board. So, but I think I can get onto it from below. Oh, that was easy. That looks more convenient, right? The tip is positive and the ring is negative. It's too fat. Okay, I anticipated something like this. Therefore, I created in advance these extensions. So two, and they extended to a really tiny needle. Ouch. And they are really, really sharp and they're elastic or they are spring loaded. But that's just a nice bonus. In this case, I think we only need one. And then we see. You see, it also works.
So now since we know where the power comes from, we just connect the cables to it to decrease the rage factor. We take this one and we start. Prepare two. Perfect, isn't it? Stop and then push it down here and it should click. Now I have to connect it to the step down converter, which you see the step down converter is quite easy. It has in plus minus and out plus minus and it has a variable resistor here to set the voltage. So what we are going to do is we will use our cables and connect them here and then we will measure the voltage on the other side until it's at 5 volts. And then we will obviously connect it to the USB port. Did I tell you that I love these helping hands? So now we are going to measure the output voltage of the step down converter and we try to set it to or we will set it to 5 volts because that's our goal okay, that's where we want to go this is what we need to power the usb stuff i connected the power brick to the mains but then i disconnected it to plug it in but as you saw, it still got some power in it and our step down converter lighted up, lit up. So we commit and we see we are about at 18 volts. So let's, which is basically zero step down stuff. 17, 16, 14. So it doesn't have to be exact because the devices today will run from like 4.5 to 5.5 volts or something like this. So as long as the power brick is in the wall and provides power, the USB port will have power. The best tool in the shop is the hot glue, of course, because you can fix everything with it. Also wanted to fix this. Next, we have to find a way to mount our little friend. Let's try this. Obvious things first. Perfect. I think it fits. It fits. Okay, it's it's not rattling, so it is a tight fit. And steady, steady. Every time you have to Google it. Every time. With USB, the power is always transferred via the outer of the four pins. And in this case, the right pin is minus and the left pin is plus. And to not mess it up, I just put a little minus on top of the minus one. Because it's mounted to the wall, so I need these points. But I don't need this one. This one will be here. And the power will come from up here like this and we'll be dangling down as well. Okay, with the power of hot glue, we fixed it here. It's not nice, but it should work. Just take the USB plug. And it went in, uh, it went in, and it's out again. So the plug is installed. 
Why is it so flimsy? What did I do? Oh, <laughs> actually I pushed it out a bit. See? So I think I should put some hot glue there as well. Now it's connected. We get the power from the power brick. We go into the step down converter. It's set to five volts and we put it to the USB plug on the back. Now what's left to do is to test it out. Therefore we take a USB cord and we plug it in there and we destroy everything because I did not yet fix it with hot glue. And we take the power and plug it in here. Okay, power is being fed to it. And then we take our testing device, which is an old, um, an old MP3 player. Plug it in there. And you see it's still working. Next steps, uh, insulate everything with hot glue. And then we put it back together and we're done. This thing is too high because I put hot glue under it. Now it's too high up, too far up, and um, it's not fitting anymore. The reason I covered this in the real blob of hot glue is that you saw when I pushed the plug in there, it actually pushed the white plastic part out of it on the back. So I need the hot glue <laughs> to keep the plastic in place and also to insulate it because on the other side is the board and we don't want to touch anything. One quick test and in there. Nice. back so the problem was i forgot to connect the connector one of the the tiny white ones so i just had to take it apart again and put the connector in there and then it worked fine so let's power it up and here we go see it's working like a charm and working perfect thanks a lot for watching <laughs> nice 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 The reason why I prefer Chromecast to like an, a television with built-in software for that is that as you saw the Chromecast gets updates, the television probably won't get updates. Thanks for watching.